Dr. Hill, we all experience sadness in our lives, and, and there are times where we call ourselves depressed, but what is depression? Depression is a mood state where you have lost the normal feeling of emotional reactivity, where you're not having any fun in life, your energy's low, your focus of your thoughts are negative, and you're just generally not having any fun. You're in a funk and you can't get out of it. Can't get out of it. Can't get out of it. Um, is age a factor in this? Um, age is a factor in this because, of course, the longer that we live, the more likely that we're going to have an episode of depression. But having your first episode of depression in late life is uncommon as opposed to having a recurrence of depression, which is very common. Now, are there different types of depression? Yes, there's lots of different kinds of depression. Um, the first type of depression that we all know about is we know about a depression that follows a very stressful life event or a loss of something that's important to us. Clinical depression, where people begin having symptoms of depression without any clear trigger. There's no stress, there's no loss, there's no uh, uh, serious life event. They just begin to have these symptoms and they kind of come out of the blue and they're not triggered by anything that they can tell. Let's talk about those symptoms. What are they? The symptoms that uh, any age adult can have are sadness, tearfulness, negative focus in terms of what they're choosing to focus on in their mind, physical symptoms like fatigue, sleep change, appetite change. Um, one of the main symptoms is people lose pleasure in the things that they normally enjoy. And of course, the a very serious emotional symptom of depression is where someone begins to think that their life isn't worth living anymore and that they'd be better off if they were dead or they might be, they and their family might be better off if they would end their life in suicide. Is there a difference between depression in older people versus younger? Older adults experience depression in more of a physical way where they don't, they've felt like they've lost their vitality that their physical symptoms begin to be amplified. They might have headaches, sleep problems, appetite loss. For a friend or family member, it makes it difficult to recognize those symptoms. You may think, well, uh, this person just, they've got a bad case of arthritis, or, or they're sick, or they have, or, or they're slipping into dementia, when in fact it could be depression, correct? Correct. Um, for family members, it's important to recognize that the older adult with depression, they have the appearance of being sad, and they have the appearance of feeling, they have the appearance of feeling tired. But the patient or the older adult may not, not feel some intensity of sadness. And so, a lot of family members might think, well, dad's just in denial. He won't admit that he's depressed. Well, he may not actually feel depressed. He may just feel tired and achy and not having any fun in life. And he may not feel the feeling of depression. And it's not purposeful on the older adult's fault part to not feel that emotional change. Uh, among older adults, is there a difference between men and women? Uh, the difference mainly has to do with the incidence of depression. We know that men have less depression in late life than women do. So women have a higher rate of depression, but fortunately women feel those, emo those depressive symptoms and they'll seek help for those. And men frequently will never be aware that they have clinical depression and won't seek help for that. Well, let's talk about the solutions here. Uh, what sort of medications exist to deal with depression? Um, there are many classes of antidepressants that are available for older adults to take. 
the most common antidepressant that's prescribed in the elderly population is sertraline. It's an SSRI, followed by uh, citalopram, uh, paroxetine, escitalopram, and citalopram. Those are all SSRIs. They're very well tolerated, and they're effective for the depressive symptoms that go along with the depressive episode. So the doctor has many different options to, to treat the whole symptoms that are occurring during that episode of depression. Are there ways that an individual can work to prevent or at least mitigate depression? Um, yes, there is. Um, of course, if you have a clinical depression, let's say your thyroid is in failure and um, you're having depressive symptoms as a result of that, it's pretty hard to act your way into feeling better if you don't have enough thyroid hormone in your body. But when we, for the most common kind of depression, which is a stress-induced depression or a life loss or a... Um, a change in your life setting, like you've retired or you've made a major move. Uh, the way to prevent having an episode of depression is to stay engaged with other people. Stay active, stay connected, continue to exercise. Um, we know that exercise is good for your body, it's really good for your brain, it's especially good for helping ward off depression. Uh, become a better sleeper. The importance of sleep in terms of preventing depression uh, can't be overstated because uh, many of us get out of our life normal route, our normal life routine, and we should should continue to focus on sleeping eight hours a night during the evening hours, not during the daytime. And so, sleep is really important. Um, continuing to have mentally stimulating activities like uh, taking a continuing education class or learning to do something new or being engaged at your, at your church or synagogue, uh, being a volunteer, all those things can help ward off uh, your, an episode of depression. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Hill, for being on The Best Times.